Hello and welcome to the NPTEL MOOC course on Economics of Health and Education. In this week, we are discussing issues surrounding equity in health and education. You will recall that in the last class, we studied about uh, equality of outcomes and opportunities. And in that class, we discussed uh, a few conceptual frameworks surrounding how we should understand about equity and equality in uh, social uh, issues such as education and health. In so doing, we got ourselves uh, familiarized with some of the ideas uh, floated by uh, Professor Amartya Sen. Uh, we also studied a few ideas uh, floated by Professor James Heckman. And then finally, we discussed uh, the um, regularly occurring uh, issue of uh, inequality in earnings in the context of uh, labor markets, which has relations with the uh, economics of health and education. And then we saw how uh, inequality of outcomes uh, are being measured in uh, terms of inequality in earnings. And we looked at a few focal variables such as gender and uh, the access to education, particularly uh, access to higher education and what impact it, it can have on equality of outcomes such as earnings. And then finally, we ended last class uh, with a few uh, lessons from intergenerational mobility and how that impacts earnings in the next generation. And so, uh, we saw how the idea surrounding equality of opportunities can be translated by looking at uh, intergenerational mobility and what impact that has on outcome variables. So, in continuation from the last class, today we will look at uh, some of the issues uh, that we regularly discuss in the context of uh, health. So, uh, this uh, lesson has been titled as equity in healthcare and a large part of this lecture has been taken from a textbook uh, on uh, health economics, which I will be referring in the slides as well as the, at the end of the reference. So, I would encourage the learners to go uh, to the textbook and look up more materials that are discussed in detail in the textbook. So, in this uh, class, I have planned this uh, lesson uh, as follows. I will uh, first discuss about the concept of vertical equity and uh, why vertical equity is generally considered when uh, discussing health financing equity uh, in the context of all countries uh, actually, whether it is developed or developing countries, often we tend to look at uh, vertical equity and there are various kinds of measures to assess vertical equity. But in this class, first we will try to understand what is this concept of vertical equity and what is its importance. Relatedly, we will also discuss uh, about catastrophic healthcare expenditure. There is a, a great amount of literature on catastrophic health expenditure in the context of both developed and developing countries and there are various uh, formulations that have come up surrounding this uh, uh, issue of catastrophic uh, healthcare expenditure. Uh, now, I will discuss uh, this concept of uh, catastrophic expenditures in the context of vertical equity. Although there are no direct relations between this concept of catastrophic expenditure and vertical equity or inequity, uh, it is I think important to look at this uh, uh, concept in that overall context. Then uh, in the third part of this lesson, we will look at the uh, concept of horizontal equity, what does it really mean? And uh, then uh, we will look at equity in the distribution of health care, of health or of utility. These are a few questions and issues that we will consider in today's class. So, let me begin with this question about how economists analyze equity in health care. And uh, towards the end of this lesson, I will uh, make a distinction between the terms equity and equality. Often students ask in the classroom about what is the difference between equity and equality and uh, there are a lot of confusion surrounding the usage of these two terms equity and equality. So, I will keep that distinction uh, to the end, but uh, let us first try to understand what do economists mean when they ask questions about equity in healthcare expenditure or equity in educational access and so on and so forth. So, equity uh, economists measure equity with respect to some measure of inequality, but there are two basic questions that we are often asking. One is whether people with the same ability to pay for health care make equal payments or not. 
So, often we uh, tend to uh, stick to the ability to pay principle to determine whether a system is progressive or regressive. And here I am not necessarily talking about the issues of distributive justice, but in terms of uh, it is more of a technical measure with respect to whether uh, a system is progressive or regressive in terms of ability to pay. And uh, whether a progressive uh, let us say healthcare system or a regressive healthcare system is fair and just is a matter of value judgment. The second question that we often ask in this context is whether people with equal needs for healthcare have equal utilization or not. So, with respect to vertical equity, we uh, the first question mostly aligns to vertical equity and the second question of uh, utilization mostly aligns to the issue of horizontal uh, equity. So, what is uh, vertical equity? What does it mean? It basically says that people with different levels of health needs should be treated differently according to their level of need. And often we take income as one of the uh, measurement uh, variables. So, we say that people with lower incomes uh, should have better support for health care or people with uh, higher income should be better able to pay for their health care needs. So, vertical equity basically looks at inequities or inequalities between different groups of people or between different people, persons. So, when we say vertical equity, we refer to people with different levels of health needs and whether they should be treated differently according to their levels of needs. Because we recognize that individuals vary in their health status and resources and therefore, equitable treatment must involve providing for specialized care to those with greater health problems or uh, needs. And the goal here is to reduce health disparities by ensuring that resources are distributed based on need rather than providing the same level of care to everyone regardless of their circumstances. So, in a sense vertical equity aims to achieve fairness by addressing the unique needs of different individuals thereby promoting overall health equity. Now, in the context of uh, a health system, now when I say health system here I am a health system financing actually, when I say health system financing, I am mostly referring to who pays for health care, whether the governments pay for health care through a well defined tax system, whether there is a social health insurance program or whether an economy is mostly dominated by a private health insurance program or whether there are more of out of pocket expenditures on health care, uh, these kinds of systems uh, really determine. Uh, what impact it has on equity considerations within the economy. So, to be able to understand this further, uh, let us uh, see this hypothetical example here. So, for a large part of this uh, lesson as I was mentioning in the beginning of this class uh, has been referred from the textbook on economic analysis in healthcare by Stephen Morris, Nancy Devlin, David Parkin and Anne Spencer. And uh, the chapter 7 of this book, uh, I would recommend the learners to read to be able to understand more about equity issues that are discussed in the context of healthcare. So, let me take you back to this hypothetical example here. This table shows uh, uh, people uh, with incomes in uh, divided into 10 categories. So, this is the income decile. So, people in the 10th decile have relatively more incomes compared to people in the lowest decile. So, you can see that the average mean income of the lowest uh, decile is uh, uh, 2000 and the average mean income in the highest decile is 100,000 or 1 lakh. So, um, we can for the time being ignore dollars and rupees here, just try and understand what is this uh, table trying to convey to us. Now, in the third column, uh, it shows the uh, progressive uh, healthcare system. Uh, basically saying what is the proportion of income that is spent on health care. So, of the annual income of 2000 uh, rupees or dollars let us say, people in the first decile uh, spend about 160 uh, units of money. So, which translates to about 8 percent of their income and that is how we can look at the other figures also. So, third column shows uh, that as income uh, rises, uh, then uh, the proportion of income that is spent on health care also rises. So, uh, in the first decile when mean annual income is 2000, 
the proportion spent on uh, healthcare is 8 percent and then it keeps rising to 9 percent, 10 percent till about 17 percent. But in this uh, column here which shows uh, regressive column, here if you would see that as income uh, rises, the proportion spent on uh, healthcare uh, reduces. So, in the lowest decile, uh, 17 percent of incomes are spent on healthcare and then it progressively reduces to about 8 percent as incomes rises to 8000 uh, units of money. But in a proportional uh, system, the proportion of income paid for healthcare does not vary with the level of income. So, when we uh, have such a system, we refer it to as a progressive financing system or a regressive financing system and a proportional financing system. So, in a progressive financing system, the proportion of income that is used to pay for health care rises as income rises. In a regressive finance system, the proportion of income that is used to pay for health care falls as income rises. And in a proportional financing system, the proportion of income paid for health care does not vary with the level of income. Now, here we are not really trying to make a conclusion whether uh, which uh, form of system is uh, better or worse for people within the society because this is that is an issue of value judgment here. But this is how we define progressive healthcare systems or regressive healthcare systems and depending upon the economic system within which we are functioning, governments may adopt one or more of these uh, systems of healthcare financing in different combinations. But one must note here that it is the proportion of income that is spent on healthcare which is relevant for determining the progressivity of the healthcare financing system and not the actual amount of income that is spent on healthcare. Now, um, there are different measures for assessing whether a healthcare system uh, follows a progressive uh, financing uh, system or a regressive financing system or a proportional financing system. And one of the measures which is often used in the context of uh, healthcare financing equity is what is called the Kakwani's Progressivity Index. So, in this lesson, I will familiarize the learners with this uh, progressivity index and also uh, show how to interpret this index. And uh, But one must understand that these kinds of indices are used extensively in various research papers and for a better understanding of how they are um, uh, translated or how they are interpreted in papers or in uh, economic systems, one has to depend on extensive reading uh, based on research materials. So, let us understand uh, this progressivity index which is called uh, Kakwani's progressivity index. This is an index which measures the extent to which healthcare finance departs from proportionality and it measures the difference between the concentration curve of healthcare payments and the Lorentz curve of income distribution. Basically, it quantifies how the burden of healthcare finance is distributed across different income groups. I will presently uh, uh, give some more details about how this is calculated, but here primarily we are looking at the difference between how much is spent on healthcare financing vis-a-vis -vis what is the uh, income distribution of individuals within the society and both of these together tell us what is the burden of healthcare financing and how it is distributed across different income groups. So, in that sense you can look at this progressivity index as some kind of an inequality measure with respect to healthcare financing. Now, uh, so for calculating the uh, Kakwani progressivity index, we have to have two plots. One is a Lorentz curve, which plots the cumulative percentage of total income received by the cumulative percentage of population ordered from the poorest to the richest. And then we have a concentration curve, which is similar to the Lorentz curve, but it plots the cumulative percentage of healthcare payments made by the cumulative percentage of the population ordered by income. And then we have an index formula which is given by KPI is the distance between the concentration curve and the Lorentz curve. We will come back to this uh, in some time. Let us have a look at this uh, cumulative uh, proportion of income and payments for health measure here. So, if you look at your uh, slide here, you will see that this figure shows two axes. On the horizontal axis, it represents the cumulative proportion of population 
ranked by income from 0 percent to 100 percent. So, on the x axis you have cumulative proportion of population ranked by income. The vertical axis here uh, represents the cumulative proportion of income or health care payments. Uh, so, this is also from 0 to 100 percent and the distribution CCPY here, uh, this curve shows the cumulative percentage of total income received by the cumulative percentage of uh, population and this is what we will call the uh, Lorentz curve here or the uh, which shows the income distribution among the uh, population. Now, all of you know that you know this is the income equality curve. So, a perfectly equal distribution is represented by the 45 degree line and the further the Lorentz curve is from the line of equality, then we will say that there is more income inequality. Now, the second curve CCYY here uh, shows the cumulative percentage of healthcare payments made by the cumulative percentage of population ranked by income. And if the concentration curve uh, here, the CCYY curve lies above the Lorentz curve as it does in this uh, uh, figure here, the concentration curve lies above the Lorentz curve. This basically indicates that healthcare payments are progressive, meaning that higher income individuals pay a higher share relative to their uh, income. So, based on this distance of the concentration curve from the line of equality, and the distance of the Lorentz curve from the line of equality, we can then calculate the Kakwani's progressivity index. So, this KPI as I said is calculated as the difference between the concentration index and the Gini coefficient and concentration index here is the area between the concentration line and the line of equality and Gini coefficient is the area between the Lorentz curve and the line of equality. And in this illustration as you can see the concentration curve CCYY is above the Lorentz curve CCPY indicating that healthcare payments are uh, progressive. Now, when we refer to equity in financing, a progressive system is generally considered more equitable because we stick to the principle of ability to pay. People who have more ability to pay should be able to spend more. So, going by that principle of ability to pay a progressive system is generally considered more equitable as it reduces the financial burden on lower income groups and ensures that those with higher income uh, contribute uh, more to the economy. So, based upon this idea of the progressivity index, various empirical studies have been carried out uh, globally based on the textbook that I have mentioned on uh, equity in healthcare economic analysis in healthcare textbook. The empirical uh, exercise that have been cited in the book refers to the one by Wagstaff et al carried out in 1999. So, in this the authors investigated progressivity of healthcare in 13 advanced countries and the data on prepayment income direct out of pocket expenses and payments for private health insurance were collected from various household surveys. And this table here uh, K shows the progressivity index for 12 countries which is less than 0, 0 and close to 0 and uh, more than 0. So, if we can interpret uh, this, um, so if I can take you back to the interpretation of the KPI as I was showing, the index formula is the concentration index minus the Gini coefficient. So, concentration index C is basically the distance of the concentration curve from the line of equality and G is the uh, space or the difference between the Lorentz curve and the line of equality. So, if KPI is positive, we say it is progressive, meaning that healthcare payments are more concentrated among higher income individuals than income itself and higher income individuals pay a larger share relative to their income. If KPI is 0, we say it is proportional, meaning healthcare payments are proportional to income and everyone pays the same percentage of their income towards healthcare and KPI is less than 0 or negative, then healthcare payments are concentrated among lower income individuals and lower income individuals pay a larger share relative to their income. So, based on this interpretation, now if you look at this, uh, the findings of this empirical study, 
you would see that the negative values basically translate to uh, relatively regressive healthcare systems uh, and so on. So, if we interpret these values, we come up with these conclusions. The authors found that in those countries uh, whose healthcare system, this study interestingly also did not just calculate the uh, KPI or the Kakwani progressivity index, but they also correlated it with the kind of healthcare financing system that is uh, implemented in practice. So, uh, with regard to healthcare financing, uh, we will take up a lesson uh, in a later period on healthcare financing. But just to um, uh, ease out things for uh, a few learners who may not be aware about healthcare financing, healthcare financing can be from uh, can be tax based financing or it can be from out of pocket expenses from the households. It could be in the form of social health insurance program like we have the Ayushman Bharat program in India or it could be in the form of privately sponsored health insurance programs. So, in this paper while they calculated vertical inequality or vertical inequity based upon the progressivity index, they also correlated it with the kind of healthcare financing system that is there in all of these 12 OECD countries. So, based on that these conclusions should be uh, read. The authors found that in those countries where healthcare system is financed predominantly via social health insurance, healthcare finance is either proportional or regressive. In countries with a predominantly tax based system, the healthcare financing system is either proportional or progressive, which includes countries like Denmark, Finland, Spain, Sweden and UK. Uh, one of the exceptions it was Portugal, where total payments were regressive due to large proportion of direct out of pocket expenditures. Their healthcare system was dominant of out of pocket expenses, meaning private expenditures made by households on healthcare. In the Switzerland and the USA where there was a greater reliance on private health insurance, the financing system overall was highly regressive. And in Italy where the healthcare system uh, was financed by an equal mix of taxation and social health insurance, total payments were found to be progressive. So, in this part uh, what we have uh, learned is uh, we have uh, familiarized ourselves with the concept of uh, vertical equity or vertical inequity. And uh, often in the context of uh, uh, healthcare uh, studies or health studies, um, uh, the health sector studies, economists concern themselves with studying about what are the uh, differential impacts of expenditure or differential impacts of financing on the health of people. So, it is in that sense that a discussion on uh, different kinds of equity concepts is important. And vertical equity is one of the ways of looking at differences between different persons or different groups of people. In this case here we have not really concerned about different uh, groups of people, but there are very many interesting studies that can be carried out to look at the differences between different groups of people also, which is where we try to intersect the issues of race, caste, ethnicity, religion into the health equity studies. And we have also uh, based upon a hypothetical example and uh, the empirical study that has been carried out by Wagstaff and others, we have seen that how uh, the progressivity index can be calculated and uh, correlated with the health financing system uh, for us to be able to assess about which healthcare financing system is more progressive or regressive than the rest. And while there are no clear cut answers to whether a progressive healthcare financing system is more preferable than the others, uh, because it is largely an issue of value judgment and uh, based upon the idea of distributive justice and fairness, uh, but different countries across the world carry out uh, healthcare financing in different combinations of progressive, regressive and proportional systems. So, with this now uh, let me move to the uh, second part of the lesson where uh, we discuss uh, catastrophic healthcare expenditures. Now, in this context of uh, how much people actually spend on healthcare and the issue of how much people spend on healthcare becomes important because it has equity considerations. So, it is in that sense that catastrophic healthcare expenditures are denounced all across the world and therefore, different kinds of thresholds has been worked out to uh, check 
uh, whether uh, healthcare expenditure in a certain country or in different states or at the household level is uh, taking is uh, a catastrophic uh, uh, nature or it is becoming more and more catastrophic which basically means that less and less uh, incomes or disposable incomes is left in the hands of the people to be able to spend on other goods and services. So, in that sense catastrophic health expenditure reflects vertical inequity within the society and it can impact health status of individuals in the short run as well as in the long run. So, let us uh, see how this uh, concept is defined. Catastrophic healthcare expenditure basically occurs when out of pocket uh, expenses or expenditures that we are making out of our own incomes, disposable incomes without any support from insurance or social health insurance or other, um, or other public support programs. The expenditure that we are making out of pocket, if they exceed a certain proportion of a household's income or consumption and then ultimately impacts the household's ability to afford other essential needs such as food, housing and education, then we will say that healthcare expenditure has taken the form of catastrophic health expenses. And different organizations and studies have defined catastrophic health expenditure using uh, various kinds of thresholds. And one of the common definitions and thresholds is provided by the World Health Organization, where um, Healthcare expenditure is considered catastrophic if a household's out of pocket expenses for healthcare exceed 40 percent of its capacity to pay, where uh, capacity to pay is defined as total income or consumption minus the subsistence need. So, let us say that a person has 100 rupees as income and of those 100 rupees if the uh, person's uh, subsistence needs amounting to education expenses, food expenses. Uh, housing expenses and all other miscellaneous expenses uh, come up to let us say 50 rupees and the person is left with another 50 rupees and if from the disposable amount of 50 rupees after catering for subsistence needs, uh, healthcare needs constitute more than 40 percent of this leftover income, then we would say that the household concerned has reached the level of catastrophic healthcare expenditure and therefore then the uh, subsistence of the household is at risk. And in various contexts alternative thresholds are also taken, usually there is a range between 10 percent to 40 percent. Uh, 40 percent is of course uh, too high which means that uh, the households are uh, at a very great danger or threat of being able to meet their um, other expenses. If uh, health expenses uh, constitute 40 percent of their uh, capacity to uh, pay or capacity uh, to spend on various goods and services. But alternatively various other thresholds are also taken between 10 percent to 40 percent and uh, based upon uh, this threshold catastrophic expenditure is calculated. Uh, so, for example, if uh, expenditures in a household exceeds uh, 10 percent of their total household income, um, then we can consider that that household is at the threshold of uh, um, entering into catastrophic health expenditures and that needs support from various uh, kinds of public programs maybe. Uh, another way of looking at it is proportion of non-subsistence income which is basically the same as uh, what we have discussed in the context of the WHO definition of uh, uh, catastrophic health expenses. Now, uh, different studies have measured catastrophic health expenditures uh, differently and often the measurements uh, are based upon household survey data. Uh, data on household income, consumption, healthcare payments are typically collected through household surveys and these surveys then help us identify the proportion of households experiencing catastrophic expenditure. In the context of India, the National Sample Survey Organization, the National Statistical Office as we know about it today collects a lot of information on healthcare expenditure. Uh, from its uh, dedicated rounds on healthcare uh, expenditure and there are also consumer expenditure uh, surveys that are carried out which can give us uh, information about catastrophic healthcare expenditures or we can estimate catastrophic healthcare expenditures based upon the survey data. The analysis also involves calculating the share of healthcare payments in relation to household income or consumption and comparing it to the defined uh, thresholds. 
Now, what are the implications and impact of uh, estimating catastrophic health expenses? Uh, it is very obviously a very important measure because it helps us to understand the financial hardship and the distress that the households are uh, going through because then the households cut back on essential expenses, uh, they, it leads to indebtedness, selling of assets, etc. And also in the context of uh, food insecurity conditions, nutrition insecurity, uh, household uh, catastrophic health expenses can add to uh, nutrition insecurity. Poverty is another important implication which uh, of course it leads to income poverty and nutrition poverty, food poverty of various kinds when there is uh, uh, more and more spending on health care. We can measure health inequity. Um, households with lower incomes are disproportionately affected by catastrophic healthcare expenditures intensifying these health inequities. In this slide, I have given uh, a link to a few data, countrywide data on the WHO website uh, which uh, shows out of pocket expenditures across countries and this database can be used to estimate uh, countrywide out of pocket expenditures uh, by an interested learner. So, now so far we have understood uh, vertical equity and as an offshoot of trying to look at vertical equity, we have also been introduced to this concept of catastrophic health expenditures which is often discussed in the context of healthcare financing. Now let us move to this concept of horizontal equity uh, in healthcare and what does it mean and how do we sort of distinguish uh, it from uh, vertical uh, equity. So, this one is based, the core idea is that people with the same health conditions should receive the same type and quality of healthcare services. For example, two patients with the same severity of a disease should have similar access to diagnosis, treatment and follow up care. And when we look at horizontal equity, we are mostly looking at the question of utilization of services or utilization of healthcare services. We can also estimate uh, vertical equity or inequity and horizontal equity or inequity in the context of education and uh, we have some work in the context of horizontal education inequalities as well. Now, another way of defining horizontal equity in healthcare financing is people with the same ability to pay should pay the same amount for healthcare and inequity exists if they pay different amounts. The second important aspect of horizontal equity is that health services are equally accessible to all individuals who need them without discrimination based on income, ethnicity, gender, geographic location and so on. And as I just said that it also uh, the focus is on utilization of health services. Uh, for instance, if two regions have the same prevalence of a particular health condition, then uh, the utilization rates of healthcare services for that condition should be similar in both the regions. Some of the examples of horizontal inequality or inequity include income disparities. Two individuals with the same health condition may receive different levels of care if one cannot afford the out of pocket costs associated with certain treatments or medications. Similarly, a patient in a rural area might not have access to uh, same specialist care available to a patient in an urban area despite having the same medical condition. We will refer it to as geographic differences based horizontal inequity. Similarly, it could be because of insurance variability where people with different types of health insurance might receive different levels of care for the same condition based on what their insurance plans cover. And this can also be estimated in the context of people who have access to social health insurance versus people who have access to private health insurance. And whether um, although they have similar ability to pay or with similar income levels, if they have access to both of these, then how that uh, shows up on a horizontal uh, inequity. To promote horizontal equity, uh, horizontal equity is desirable. Uh, therefore, to promote horizontal equity, health systems implement various kinds of policies. Uh, for example, universal health coverage is one where it is ensured that all individuals have access to essential health services without financial hardship, which uh, many uh, health programs across Indian states today um, have their primary objective. Uh, some of the healthcare reforms that have been carried out in India carry the objective of universal health coverage. Uh, resource allocation meaning that uh, distributing healthcare resources equitably across different regions and populations to ensure equal access. 
By resource allocation here we can mean uh, different kinds of resources, it may refer to healthcare institutions, it may refer to healthcare workforce, it may refer to um, uh, financial resources for procuring various kinds of services, drugs and medicines and so on. Uh, reducing financial barriers is one of the important objective uh, by implementing subsidies, uh, sliding scale fees. Uh, sliding scale fees uh, meaning that they are basically a flexible pricing strategy that adjusts the costs of services based on the client's ability to pay and this method is often used by healthcare providers, therapists, legal services and other professionals to make their services more accessible to a broad range of people especially those with lower incomes. Uh, similarly, training and awareness could be one of the ways of addressing horizontal inequity. Now, health uh, financing systems can also uh, result in horizontal uh, inequality. Uh, you must be noticing that I am using the term equity and inequality uh, quite synonymously. Uh, however, uh, although we tend to use these terms uh, synonymously, there are slight differences between these terms which we will uh, discuss uh, towards the end of this class. So, health system financing system can also result in horizontal inequality. For example, when we have uh, tax based systems, direct taxation inequity arises if local taxes vary across regions. Uh, indirect taxation inequity arises if people with the same income consume different amounts of taxable goods. In the case of social health insurance, inequity can occur if households with similar incomes uh, belong to different schemes with varying payment schedules and often due to occupation specific schemes. So, I may be in the occupation of let us say the education sector, someone else may be in the occupation of the health sector. We may have uh, similar incomes, but we may be enrolled in different social health insurance programs and therefore, that may impact our health outcomes uh, differently. Now, this is also an example of how horizontal equity or inequity can be looked at. Uh, similarly, with respect to private health insurance, because it is not compulsory, people with the same income may pay different amounts if they choose different coverage levels and different risk statuses also lead to different premiums for people with the same income. Out of pocket payments are of course, one of the important uh, uh, reasons of uh, inequity and they can arise from individual variations in healthcare needs and preferences among people with the uh, same income. Like uh, vertical inequity, uh, various empirical studies have also been carried out in the context of uh, uh, horizontal inequity. Uh, for example, uh, authors such as Aronson et al, uh, they measure inequity by the variation in healthcare payments among groups with the same prepayment income using the concentration index for payments that we have seen in the case of the progressivity index and horizontal equity exists if there is no variation within each group. Uh, studies by uh, Van Dorslayer et al, they have carried out where they have shown that uh, they analyzed healthcare uh, financing in uh, OECD countries and they show that vertical inequity is more significant than horizontal inequity and their relative importance varies by financing type uh, with tax based and social health insurance payments having less horizontal inequity compared to private insurance and out of pocket uh, payments. Now, these are very significant findings in the context of healthcare systems. We can sort of, uh, you can go back to the uh, discussion that we were having in the context of uh, budgetary processes of fiscal policy. Uh, when the political system takes uh, the decision about uh, which kind of a tax system to be followed or which kind of a health system to be implemented, often these decisions impact uh, outcomes. Uh, particularly in the context of uh, health financing, it impacts health outcomes and it is in this sense that the uh, measurements of vertical inequity and horizontal inequity has a lot of importance in the, uh, in the context of an economy, whether vertical inequity overpowers horizontal inequity uh, or vice versa can actually provide direction to the kind of policy that needs to be implemented at the country level or at the state level. Now, let us uh, go to the question of when we are saying distribution or equity in the distribution of health care, health or utility, what are we saying? Are we talking about equity in the distribution of health care services 
or are we talking about equity in uh, health status? Now, you can recall from the Grossman's model of demand for health that we studied that healthcare services are largely demanded because of their effect on health or health status or health and well-being. And health economists are therefore not just interested on how healthcare is supplied or financed, but also what is its impact on the health of patients. So, therefore, then the question is, shouldn't health and not healthcare be the focus of equity in distribution? And there are many proponents of this view who argue that equity in health is a more fundamental objective than equity in healthcare. And uh, economists actually study both equity in health and equity in healthcare. So, because equity in healthcare also has a lot to do with equity in healthcare financing. And equity in health also has a lot to do with equity in health status. Uh, so, which is why, for example, we concern ourselves a lot with issues about uh, maternal mortality, child mortality. So, if uh, maternal mortality rates are very high or infant mortality rates are very high, then it shows up on the equity of uh, health status in a particular location or a country as a whole and then therefore our systems are tuned in such a manner that we uh, bring down uh, these inequities in health outcomes. But uh, often when we talk about catastrophic health expenditures, uh, that health expenditures are eating into our subsistence incomes, then we are uh, concerning ourselves with equity in healthcare financing systems for example. So, all of these have importance in their own places and um, economics of health uh, considers all of these studies in differing uh, contexts. Now, when we say distribution of uh, equity or something should be equitably distributed or health outcomes should be equitably distributed, uh, then we ask this question, what is the distribuendum that we are actually uh, concerned with? or what is it that we are distributing here and what is the appropriate distribuendum that we are distributing. So, healthcare often serves the purposes beyond just improving health, it can also enhance overall well-being or utility. For example, while we talk about maternal mortality, child mortality, we talk about access to healthcare services, uh, access to healthcare services for treating diseases, uh, or diabetes, cancers and so on and so forth. There are also health interventions that take place that are utility enhancing in nature. For example, you may have health education programs that provide you health education, but they do not directly improve your health status. Similarly, you may uh, have uh, seen or experienced in vitro fertilization helping infertile couples experience parenthood. Uh, there are various uh, uh, tattoo removal interventions that are carried out that reduce uh, social stigma. Uh, people carry out facial surgeries, uh, hair transplants and so on and so forth. There are many beauty enhancing surgeries, uh, dental procedures to, uh, to improve the utility of an, in, uh, the utility one wants to have out of beauty enhancing features and so on. So, when we experience these uh, kinds of interventions, these services aim to increase utility rather than health outcomes. And uh, the focus on health or utility depends on our belief about resource allocation. So, this is where we make a difference between the two concepts of welfareism and extra welfareism. If we think resource allocation should be based only on the utility or the overall happiness or satisfaction one draws out of uh, the resource allocation, then we call it welfareism. But if we believe that uh, resource allocation should also consider other factors like health in addition to utility, then we will call it as extra welfareism. So, the uh, appropriate distributendum that we were talking about or the criterion for distributing resources should be determined by the goal of healthcare. If the goal is to improve utility, then equity and distribution should be based on it utility. And if the goal includes other factors such as health, then the distribution criteria must also include those factors aligning with the concept of extra welfareism. Now, let me also discuss a few concepts of equity in health and healthcare. These are uh, concepts uh, uh, which are uh, used uh, frequently when we are discussing economics of healthcare and uh, there is no scope to discuss these concepts in any other lessons. But since we are discussing uh, equity in healthcare today, 
Uh, it is, I think, appropriate to touch upon a few concepts that we must bear in mind when we are doing equity studies in healthcare financing. One of the concepts is, is utilitarianism. So, this basically aims to maximize society's welfare by the equal weighted sum of utilities. It might increase inequality by improving the health of the majority at the expense of a minority with rare conditions because going by the concept of utilitarianism, we are bound by the idea of greatest happiness of the greatest numbers. But in the pursuit of greatest happiness of the greatest numbers, we might be compromising on the uh, happiness of a minority of uh, population uh, who also require uh, different kinds of interventions and particularly when it comes to the issues of education and health, it may have human rights dimensions. Uh, equal health is a concept that is often associated with equity studies. Uh, this seeks to reduce health inequalities often measured by quality adjusted life years and there are various kinds of measures, uh, studies that uh, do these kinds of estimates. Uh, achieving equal health may restrict personal behaviors and must consider non-health factors like diet, housing, etc. Similarly, equal expenditure is one uh, concept that is used in the context of equity studies. Uh, this proposes that everyone receives the same share of healthcare spending, which can then be modified to equal expenditure for equal need, similar to equal use for equal need. And this approach does not account for individual preferences or risk attitudes. There is the principle of Maximin, which is derived from Rawls's theory of distributive justice. And it prefers options where the worst outcome is the least bad, aiming to maximize the health of the most ill. And this contrasts with Nozick's libertarian view, which accepts any distribution from uh, free uh, exchange. Uh, similarly, the concept of fair innings, uh, this one proposes everyone is entitled to a certain amount of lifetime health, let us say quality adjusted life years. And those who fall short are uh, quote unquote cheated and those who exceed it are living on borrowed time. So, aged people are living on borrowed time and if younger uh, people um, uh, fall short of their life, then they are cheated. So, it suggests uh, this kind of an analysis suggests prioritizing health care for those with less than a fair innings, often implying that more resources should be spent for the young over the elderly. Now, so these are some of the key points of equity in health and healthcare. First is that equity concepts are diverse and can contain uh, resource allocation, which is what we are referring to as distributendum here. Second, utilitarianism might prioritize widespread small benefits over significant help to a, a few. Third, equal health aims for health equality, but is influenced by many non-healthcare factors. Fourth point is that equal expenditure and access emphasize fairness but face practical implementation challenges. And finally, maximum and fair innings focus on supporting the least well off and ensuring a fair share of health across lifetime. But while we are discussing all of these, we must understand that all of these concepts basically highlight the complexity and varied ach approaches to achieving equity in healthcare uh, distribution. Now, in the last uh, uh, part of this lesson, I want to make this uh, distinction between equity versus equality because these are a few questions that we have often heard in classroom settings where young learners want to understand this uh, difference between equity and equality and whether we should consider them as the same or not. Now, as you must have observed throughout the lesson, I have been using both of these terms synonymously. Uh, although I am using these terms synonymously, we must acknowledge the fact that we are using them interchangeably, but we must acknowledge uh, that they represent different concepts, especially in the context of resource allocation and uh, including healthcare. So, let us see what is this distinction. Now, we generally define equality by saying that equality means treating everyone the same, providing the same resources, opportunities and support. Equity on the other hand means providing individuals with resources and opportunities tailored to their specific deprivations or their specific needs to achieve fair outcomes. So, it focuses on fairness and justice in the distribution of resources. With regard to application, we use equality by saying that everyone receives the same level of service, 
or resources regardless of their specific needs or circumstances. With regard to equity, we say resources are distributed based on the unique needs of individuals aiming to level the playing field. So, in the healthcare setting, an example of equality would mean giving every patient the same type and amount of medical care regardless of their health status or individual needs. And equity would mean allocating more resources and specialized care to patients with more severe health conditions or those from disadvantaged backgrounds to achieve comparable health outcomes for all. So, what are the key differences in terms of focus? Equality uh, focuses on uniformity in treatment and resources. Equity focuses on fairness in outcomes through tailored support, which means that equity may want to look at non-uniform treatments to be able to have fairness in outcomes. With regard to resource allocation, equality, uh, the difference between equality and equity is that everyone gets the same when we mean equality and equity resources are distributed based on individual needs. With regard to outcomes, equality may not lead to fair outcomes as it does not account for different starting points or needs, but equity aims to achieve fair outcomes by addressing individual disparities. Uh, examples in the healthcare, uh, equality would mean provide the same number of doctor visits to all patients and equity would mean provide more frequent doctor visits and additional support to patients with chronic illnesses or those from underserved communities to improve their health outcomes. In terms of a visualization, now this is a visualization which many of you may have seen in many contexts in uh, various kinds of media. Uh, I have taken this picture from the uh, blog written by Stephen Menendian, Equity versus Equality, What is the Difference? Uh, this is a blog on the website belonging berkeley.edu. I have uh, used this uh, image from there. You can see that the concept of equality and equity is contrasted by the use of uh, stools for a person with a very short height who wants to see uh, the game beyond a boundary. And uh, so, equality you can imagine a fence of the same height for everyone to see a baseball game let us say. Some people example children might not be able to see over the fence while others can. So, uh, but equity would provide different heights of stools. So, everyone regardless of their height can see over the fence and enjoy the game. So, equality treats everyone the same, but equity recognizes and accommodates differences to achieve fair and just outcomes for all. So, in this uh, lesson, uh, we have uh, studied some of the conceptualizations surrounding equity in health. I have tried to give you some materials as to how we conceptualize studies on equity in health. It could refer to equity and inequity in health outcomes or we can look at equity and inequity in uh, healthcare financing, which is actually an opportunity for health outcomes. Uh, so, depending upon the context, these conceptualizations can be used to estimate uh, different forms of uh, equity. Um, and can be uh, implemented and applied to uh, various uh, subnational contexts. For example, in the Indian context, we have different states and we have different kinds of categorizations made for states and districts and so on. We often want to talk in terms of state level analysis, district level analysis and it is in this context that all of these conceptualization comes in handy. So, for this uh, lesson, I have extensively referred to uh, the chapter 7 in the book Economic Analysis in Healthcare, the chapter titled Equity in Healthcare. I have referred to some of these papers, uh, Wagstaff and others, uh, Aronson and others, and Van Dorslayer and others. These papers appear in the Journal of Health Economics, National Tax Journal, and also Journal of Health Economics and a few websites that I have referred to uh, look at the WHO database on out of pocket expenditures and the blog to bring out the distinction between equity versus inequality. So, with this I end uh, the second lesson of this week. In the uh, third and final lesson of uh, this week, we will look at education inequities. See you next time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.